Okay, good evening, folks. Good evening. Uh, my name's Mitch Cooper. I'm the uh, sheriff here in Blair County. Uh, for uh, I see a lot of familiar faces out there. It's so wonderful to see uh, a nice crowd with us here tonight uh, to revitalize a program that's been very important to me for the past 12 years, and that's the Neighborhood Watch program. And when I see uh, the familiar faces, I see a lot of long-termers who have been with us over the years, uh, dating back to about 1999, when things really got uh, rolling in the uh, city of Altoona. Uh, just a brief, very brief history of Neighborhood Watch in the city of Altoona and Blair County. Uh, we got things started back in about 1999 or the year 2000. And uh, it was with great help uh, from Blair County Senior Services. And Robin Beck's here tonight. She was uh, very instrumental in, in helping getting things rolling. There was a grant that was obtained by Blair Senior Services that helped to organize the various neighborhood watch programs. And as it grew uh, over the next 10 years, uh, things uh, were, were uh, kind of mixed in results. We had a tough period of time in the year about the year 2004, 2005, 2006. Uh, I'm sure everybody remembers uh, uh, the violence that was occurring, particularly in the city of Altoona. Uh, fortunately, in 2006, Operation Our Town uh, stepped up and uh, began a, a tremendous partnership with law enforcement. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. And a part of that also was the Neighborhood Watch program. Uh, in our heyday uh, a few years ago, uh, we had six real good active Neighborhood Watch programs in the city of Altoona, and there were uh, active Neighborhood Watch programs throughout Blair County. All the boroughs, uh, we have representatives from Bellwood, uh, uh, Martinsburg here tonight, Roaring Spring, uh, all the boroughs and, and the townships, Logan Township had a group going, and it was instrumental in helping to bring down the violent crime, the incidents of violent crime. I know in the city of Altoona, uh, from the years of 2005, 2006, when we moved into th 2008, 2009, we saw approximately a 70% decrease in the use of firearm uh, uh, crimes in the city of Altoona. And that was a great part to the very fine police department in the city of Altoona and the help that, and the partnerships that we got from the community. And that's what the Neighborhood Watch Program is all about. I don't think there's a police officer here tonight who would disagree with the statement that the police can combat crime in our neighborhoods and in our communities without forming partnerships. Operation Our Town has been a great example of a partnership. The Neighborhood Watch Program is another fine example of a partnership that where the citizens of our community and the police work together to help prevent crimes and identify criminals. We want to th give special uh, recognition to the partnerships that have been formed to bring back or revitalize the Neighborhood Watch Program. Uh, the Blair County District Attorney's Office, my office, the Office of Attorney General, all the police departments. And I, I rarely do this, but I, I really want to name uh, the representatives that are here tonight from the police departments. Uh, Chief Janice Freeling from the Altoona Police Department is here. She has given her full support to uh, getting this program back up and running. And I, I see some of the best guys in the back, the bike patrol. And I, I don't know of anybody in the, uh, Alt the city of Altoona, Altoona that can uh, say that you know, you guys are top notch and we appreciate everything you do to help us in the community. We also have Chief Roger White 
from Blair Township with us tonight. Thank you, Roger. We have uh, Trooper uh, Jeff Petucci from the Pennsylvania State Police with us tonight. They have also uh, made a commitment to this program. We have Chief uh, Kerry Hoover with us from Martinsburg Borough. We have Lieutenant uh, Gil Barton from the Logan Township Police Department with us tonight. We have Chief Paul Failer from the Bellwood Police Department, Chief Kagerice from the Williamsburg Police Department, and Chief Mike Lowry from the Penn State Altoona Police Department. I hope I haven't missed anyone, and that's why I rarely do this, but is there another police department that I have missed? Okay, good, good. Also, I just want to shout out and say thank you. Uh, uh, Mayor Bill Sheriff is here from the city of Altoona. Uh, Commissioner Ted Beam is here from the county. I just saw Commissioner Terry Tomasetti come in. Uh, we have Councilman Mike Hare with us tonight. We have Don Witherspoon uh, from the uh, NAACP who is here tonight, a great supporter of this program. Uh, Joe Herb from the uh, Chamber of Commerce. And that's what we're talking about, uh, partnerships, getting these partnerships together to help us uh, complete the goal of Operation Our Town, and that is taking back our neighborhoods. I want to also thank uh, the Operation Our Town staff. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have this presentation tonight. I want to, again, uh, thank the uh, Neighborhood Watch Steering Committee Betsy Hurst is a part of that. She is here tonight. Uh, she was a, a great help in obtaining some grant money from Operation Our Town uh, to get this thing up and rolling again. And a special thank you to uh, Penn State Altoona uh, for granting us the use of this facility tonight. We thank you very much. Our agenda. We like to keep our meetings to an hour. And we're going to try our best to keep this meeting to an hour tonight. Uh, what I'd like to do is start off things by introducing the president of Operation Our Town, Mike Fiore. Michael, thank you very much. Thank you. Keep it from an hour, I think I'm done. <laughs> no, uh, actually, what I'd like to say first is I'd like everybody to give yourselves a round of applause because you're the ones that make the difference, not us. And we can't thank you enough for, uh, for coming tonight because I think it's important um, for our community, uh, for people to get involved. And Operation Our Town, you know, founded in, in 2007, started talking about it in 2006. But this is just another prime example of some of the good things that our community is doing for yourself to take back our neighborhoods, the, to invest in our community and keep it a safe place and a great place to live and a great place to raise our children. And with that being said, uh, I'm standing up here today just to, to uh, thank all of you and more importantly, the committee that has come forward because what Operation Our Town is really about is about the partnerships. And uh, we have a group of us that uh, are the organizers of Operation Our Town, but we do not, we are not attributed to the success of Operation Our Town. It's the people of our community. Our community has really risen up above, all, above and beyond all uh, throughout the state of Pennsylvania. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, cities and communities that would love to reputate, reputate what we have, but uh, they don't have the community support the people aren't standing up. And especially, I want to thank the businesses because that's where it really got started. Our business community, uh, once again, has stepped up and to the plate and really became the backbone of our organization. And that organization is in the, in the funding is what enables us to do the special, the little extra things that we do for law enforcement, for prevention, and for uh, you know working with treatment, all three prongs of those are very important. Law enforcement naturally is the most visible, but the the, the things behind the scene are, are also just as equally important. But what you're doing here tonight is an, is an answer to a call that our community, our community leaders, has asked us to facilitate. 
And thanks to Mitch and to Betsy and to Michael, uh, you know, some of the people that are leading this, uh, th this charge, uh, this is exactly what we need to do to take back our neighborhoods and to keep our neighborhoods safe. And it's from, from your efforts, your efforts here tonight, and I just know that this will, this will continue to grow. Uh, and we, you know, we're going to start in the city of Altoona, but we're all about the whole county. Uh, that we we want to look out for the whole county, and we want to keep people going down, I, down or up I-99. If they want to deal drugs, they can keep on trucking because we don't have time for them in our community. And your eyes and your ears are the best tool for our law enforcement. And then, of course, what comes from behind after that, uh, you know, our first conversation with our governor today, Governor Tom, uh, Tom Corbett, uh, who was then the attorney general. And uh, Phil DeVorce and I went down and met with him for our first meeting. And he says, listen, he says, I will give you the commitment, everything you need, that law enforcement will, will be at your side. He says, but we can weed them all day long. And if you don't keep seeding, the weeds keep coming back. And that's, you know, I, I get chills when I talk about it because that's the most important thing. We got to keep seeding our neighborhoods and we have to keep a, a vigilant eye out. And if you notice our new logo that's coming out, and I've been since day one saying that we got our eye on you, we will keep our eyes on you, uh, and you aren't going to get away with it around here. And uh, th th this neighborhood watch, uh, I'm just so pleased that people are stepping up. Because one person, two people, three people, four people can't do it. We got to do it as a community. And I just I applaud everybody. And thank you for coming out here tonight. I think it's going to be a great program, and it's going to be another feather in our cap for this community because you will see it work, just like we saw Push Out to Push Your Hotline work, just like we saw the partnerships that we build throughout the community, the people that we put in jail, give them free room and board. We give them free room and board all night long. We'll send them to jail. Uh, unfortunately, that's a real expensive way to do it. But uh, I know this program will be a great success, and thank you for coming out. Thank you. Yeah, can you Our town was founded in 2007 to combat a deteriorating community riddled with drugs and resulting crime. It was believed that if the citizenry worked together to improve our community, we could literally take back our neighborhoods. To do nothing was no longer an option. People have to remember how what was going on here before Operation Our Town became implemented. The uh, drug crime and the violent crime in this county, anyway, it was probably as at the highest level or probably the most we've seen in a decade prior to that. Between the drug, uh, gang activity and the proliferation of drugs, that's the situation that we found ourselves in before Operation Hard Town came around. In March of 2006, it appeared the violence in and around Altoona was not going to end. And they're fighting over who knows what. Okay, it could be drug related. One night, more than a dozen shots were fired near Evergreen Manors. The next day, shots were heard near the 2000 block of 18th Street. Then that same day, this. On busy 17th Street, cars slammed into each other after one car was fired into. At that point, it was critical to this area 
Uh, we were really uh, hurting for funds. We were hurting for manpower, hurting in technology and operation of our town. Uh, gave us the, the tools to be able to get back on top. Everyone in the community is affected by drugs and crime. But maybe no other group is affected more than our children. Most of the kids have a, come from homes that are somewhat dysfunctional. Uh, a lot of times they don't have a parent at home that can help them with their homework. They may not get the moral values that need to be instilled as you're growing up. All they see is uh, maybe the big brother who's been a drug addict or even some of the parents. We have kids in the program actually whose uh, parents have died uh, from drug overdoses. A large number of overdoses. Uh, and I think the statistics said something about it being the highest in the nation or one of the highest in the nation for this county. The generations just came to keep perpetuating themselves. The human cost to our community is high, but drugs and crime also impact business. A lot of the crime involving the business community, which results in a loss of their profits, a loss of their business, comes from drugs. But you can see, especially back in 2006, 2007, you have the property crimes going up, you have crimes of violence going up. Operation Our Town's mission, facilitate partnerships between the community and business to fight drug use and crime through proven law enforcement, treatment, and prevention techniques. The Gloria Gaines Memorial Foundation, our, our main goal is to try to break the cycle of poverty. And, and in order to do that, we have to address the factors that are involved in poverty. We're able to supply a role model and to show them a side of life that they might not otherwise see and to realize that there's a better way to live and that they, that they can rise above all that and make something out of themselves. Because I know what could have happened to those kids if they hadn't um, changed their ways. If we can get the kids to do well in school, then they have a much better chance of staying out of trouble, stay away from drugs and crime. And then, of course, going on to higher education and, and then a good job. Our efforts are designed to help strengthen existing organizations within our community so that they may serve and accomplish more. And by creating a dialogue between these varied organizations, we create a much more potent force against drugs and crime. Our future depends on prevention. And we believe we can change, break those cycles to where these kids have, have a shot at living a, a normal, healthy, healthy, happy lifestyle. Our desire and our purpose here at Joshua House is to help see kids um, move from where they're at to really what they're supposed to do in life. What the Gloria Gates Memorial Foundation does now is helps kids stay out of trouble and reach their potential so that they're beneficial members of this community, so that they're an asset. The kids ask for more and more food when we feed them. It's not unusual for them to ask, can I have more? So we'd like to give them more. But uh, up till now, we haven't had the money really to give them more. And some of the kids may or may not get a real healthy supper. So they come to our program for this healthy snack, and it's a good way for us to lure the kids in every day. And Operation Our Town helps us with that. One of the reasons that Joshua House is so good for the community is that it provides a safe place, a safe haven for kids to get off the streets, to get involved in activities. Well, we've done everything here from hairdos for prom night to changing oil on a car to homework help to uh, helping with more serious issues too with the young people. Because of strong financial support from area businesses and an energized effort from the community, Operation Our Town has made a positive impact in our neighborhoods. Since we got involved with Operation Our Town, we had the kids plant gardens outside. They put in 650 retaining wall stones by hand, 17 tons of dirt, 300 tons of material to put in the volleyball court, all of that funded by Operation Our Town. Uh, we've built a large playground at the bottom of the street, which uh, has given the kids a place to come play and to be off the streets. Chief Ron Heller of Logan Township has a SWAT team that received close to $5,000 from Operation Our Town to buy these tools and one of these shields. I really think it made an impact. I mean, crime is down overall in the county. Operation Our Town helped to fund a total of 1,430 drug arrests from 2007 to 2009. That includes overtime for officers who make the arrests after their duty hours. The different units, AG's office, state police, 
local law enforcement, they, they had their drug units. But of course, they're limited in the amount of uh, drug activity they can uh, co uh, combat. The money from Operation Hard Time would supplement those budgets so that more uh, drug enforcement could be used. Quite frankly, I don't know what we would have done with that Operation Hard Time. Uh, they provided us about $260,000 just for law enforcement alone. Uh, with that money, we were trained, trained management people, we trained uh, electronic surveillance people. They gave us new technology to use on our war against drug dealers. Yeah, I want to I want to say thank you to Operation Art. I mean, uh, without you all, we probably would have shut down. A lot has been accomplished, but is the fight over? Of course not. We must continue to combat drugs and crime at every level. The fact is, drugs, the root of much of our crime, will always present us with new challenges. We're concerned about some influx of meth right now. Bass salts thing is now all of a sudden becoming a, a big deal with kids. Another thing we've been seeing in the area is the problem with methamphetamine. Predominantly out west, it seems to be coming uh, to Pennsylvania, specifically to central Pennsylvania, and we need to aggressively combat that. Until one day one of them goes to school with a gun, or until one of them's arrested on, on drug charges. Until then, they're invisible and the community doesn't notice. The after school time is one of the highest crime times of the day as kids come home from school. The parents a lot of times are at home. Uh, they're left to wander the neighborhood and that seems to be when they get into trouble. Law enforcement, they know that if these invisible kids are not helped, if their needs aren't met, then they're gonna become very visible and very costly problems to society. Prevention resources are more important than ever for our most important community asset, our young people. We need to pull together and become involved as caring members of our society. More like a family who looks out for each other. Maybe these kids have already figured that out. It's about family, to tell you, to tell you the truth. Like, we're all a big family. The main word that we use is like family because we are. Well, if it wasn't for the door, I'd probably be probably back in my house fighting with my family like we used to all the time. A lot of people here have actually helped me out and probably actually turned me into a better person, really. So when I first came here, I was always getting into trouble. But now I don't really have to worry about that because I'm barely getting any now. So I've been coming here for a good 10, 10 years or so, something like that, and uh, they, they've done a lot. It's a really good place. I mean, obviously, you see, there's a lot of kids here don't have anything to do, and it's a good place to go hang out and a lot of fun stuff. We're making a difference in a couple hundred kids for the cost of locking three up. What, what makes sense? That makes sense to me. There are many young people in our community that could benefit significantly from the treatment and prevention programs that exist today. But these organizations can't do it alone. Altoona has been a wonderful place for me to live and my family. And I think a lot of people feel that way. And we want it to stay that way. Um, and the way to do that, of course, is, is to support an organization like Operation Our Town. That's their main goal, is to keep us in a nice, safe, pleasant community. If we didn't have an operation out of town, then some of these programs wouldn't exist. Really, it helps change some lives, gets kids off the street. And uh, by, by reducing the drug activity, you reduce the crime in general, and that's been a big, big uh, benefit, I think, in this community. Once the community is not a safe place, or is perceived not to be a safe place to be out and about in, you're not going to have uh, as, as much uh, business going on, you're not going to have people wanting to go to businesses, you can make the community a safer place to live in, it's, it's also going to be a better and more productive place for businesses. The future is you have to be alert and you have to be vigilant and you have to be in a position where you can combat anything that happens. I think it would be a major blow to the area if Operation Art Towns ceased to exist. Okay, I'd like to uh, 
invite Randy Feathers, the regional director of the AG's Bureau of Narcotics, to come up and say a few words. <laughs> well, I have Rich coming up here next, and we did talk to Rich earlier to try to get him out of his shell tonight so he could talk to us a little bit, you know, if you've seen Rich talk before. But uh, I will be brief. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming. This is a very important night. It's important that you leave here today and talk to other people about getting some of these neighborhood groups involved. This drug problem slash crime problem is not a police problem. It's a community problem. And it's going to take the community to help the police get it back together. And I worry so much. Operation Our Town has done so much for us. I worry at some point in time that the momentum stop, stop, and... Uh, we start going back the way we used to have it. And we can't have that. We have to stay on top of this problem. And that's why I think this is the next logical step to take. Because I can remember when we started in 2007, sitting with Michael and the Sheets and the divorces and a lot of other people. Uh, and we, and Don, I remember this. It took us weeks to figure out slogans and taking back our neighborhoods. And that is so crucial because this is what this neighborhood watch is all about, is taking back our neighborhoods. Because these drug people and crime people, they don't give the neighborhood to us. We have to take it back from them. So it's important to have the ears, the eyes. Right now, law enforcement, uh, we're having trouble funding from all the different municipalities, the state, the state police. We're all having problems. It's economic times right now. We need to take the next step to get the community more involved with us. Uh, we have a lot of ideas. I know uh, Joe Hurd's here today from the Chamber of Commerce. We like businesses to get involved. I had a gentleman come to me before the meeting, said that he uh, uh, lives up by Mike's Court, which is a local bar in the Elton area. A friend of mine, by the way, and uh, I volunteered Mike's place for a meeting place up there. He don't know it yet, but uh, <laughs> he'll find out. He's probably getting called right now. But that's what we're trying to get some businesses involved in the neighborhoods that, the, that they have the businesses in to get involved. We're looking for rotary clubs and those type of people to get involved. This is very important. This is your chance to really get involved. And I know we have a lot of leaders here tonight, and I do appreciate that. And uh, we do need your help. And I'm going to be very brief, which is sort of what I do all the time. I don't know why Mitch is making fun of me like that. But, um, but thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be here later. If you have any questions for us, but please, let's get involved. If you look around tonight and you don't see your chief of police, and I do see my, I'm from Logan Township. I see my police department up there. Uh, you know, call your local chief. Uh, tell them you want to get something started. Uh, they, police have been fantastic. They have full support of this program, and they're going to work with us to try to get these meetings going and these neighborhood groups going. And once again, like Michael said, uh, thank you very much for coming. You people should be applauded for tonight. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce someone who needs no introduction, and I, actually Rich is probably one of our most requested speakers over the years that I've been involved in this program. So if our district attorney, Rich Consiglio, would come up. I know he doesn't need, uh, need a microphone. If you've ever heard Rich speak, it's from all those years on the basketball court. Yeah, and honey. <laughs> Rich. Damn it, honey. Yeah, damn it, honey. That's it. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> uh, Mitch is right. When my daughter played at BG, uh, one of the coaches at that time thought her, whenever I told, her his, told him her name was Jade, he said, well, I thought her first name was damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to really be on her back a lot about how she played, but nevertheless... <laughs> Uh, I just got back from Harrisburg uh, arguing a case before the Superior Court to try to keep a sadistic murderer in jail. Now, how that's going to turn out, I don't know until they make their decision. <clears throat> but uh, situations like that are sort of the end game of how uh, you handle everything in your neighborhood, including and most specifically, of course, crime. But like I said, that's the end game, or maybe close to the end game. We don't know. If a, if a case comes back, we've got to try it again, uh, or maybe we go to, the, to a higher court beyond that if, we don't, if the things don't come out our way. If they do, then it is pretty much the end game. But the beginning game is what we're here for tonight. What can the community do as sort of the first step to help law enforcement 
uh, deal with the people that I end up dealing with uh, in my office. The police are like, I guess, the second step. The first step is what Operation Our Town is all about, the community getting involved to see what they can do to alert authorities about what's going on in their community. Because who is the people that are the most, uh, in the best position, I should say, to do that? The people live in the neighborhood. If something's happening on your block, or if you don't live in an area that has blocks, you're in a rural area, or some of the smaller towns don't necessarily have blocks in your neighborhood, what's going on? You know, way before I know, way before the police know, unless, of course, something happens just like that and the police are called to some, some major incident that occurs that they just can't avoid. But if something is, if there's some turmoil, if there's some undertone that's, uh, that's uh, bringing about the crime, if there's that drug dealer that's, in, that's at the, down at the end of the block, people know about it. They see the traffic coming in. They maybe aren't happy about it, or maybe they're afraid about it, or maybe they don't know what the hell to do about it. But basically, they know it's there. So if they are able to communicate to the police through some type of given organization that this is going on and alert the police, then that helps things. Sometimes people get discouraged about it because, especially in the drug area, Somebody will say, well, there's a drug dealer down on my, uh, down on my block, and I called the police, and they were, I called uh, uh, one of the hotlines or something, and nothing happened. The problem is that things always don't happen like that. They th a lot of people think, I call them today, they should be here in 10 minutes to arrest that guy. Unfortunately, because of certain laws and a certain way you have to present cases in court, you have to build a case. And oftentimes it's weeks, maybe months, before that guy is arrested. But eventually, he, he usually will be, because they do what they need to do, get informants in with this guy, buy drugs off of him, things of that nature, so they can build a case and show the other uh, members of the community that turn out to be jurors that, yeah, he really is a drug dealer. And you'd be surprised how many people are not necessarily willing to convict a guy like that unless you can practically show them a movie picture of what he's doing. They don't often want to take the word of informants or uh, the evidence that they see that may not be a specific, hey, I saw this guy hand this guy drugs for money. It doesn't happen that way very often because these guys in most ways are stupid and in some ways they're not. When it comes to selling drugs and making money and being sneaky about it, they ain't stupid. In fact, Joe Heard, actually they're businessmen. Except they are not the type of businessmen you deal with usually. This is a business to them. A lot of these guys don't even use drugs themselves. It's for money. It's for money and they usually call their drugs their product. They don't say our oh, drugs, we're drugs. That's their business. That's their product. And so they are not looking to get caught. And it's just not drugs, it's any other kind of crime. It's problems you see in a neighborhood. It's people that are uh, writing graffiti on the walls or breaking something, they throw a brick through somebody's window just for the hell of it. Stuff like that. And people involved in the community can say, I saw this, I know that, I know what those people are like, and that's how this neighborhood watch helps the community. You know, about two, three, four years ago, I forget when the last time was that I was actually at a community watch program, and I was going to them pretty regularly. And what it all would really be is the very simplest thing. People would be together at a meeting, talking about what's going on in their community, and talking about how they can do better, and how they can convey this information to the police. There might be 10 people, there might be 30, there might be three. And we would go to these meetings over and over again, and they, uh, uh, the senior citizens help fund it, or not so much fund it, but you know, organize it. And then senior citizens, the people that did the organization, lost whatever funding they had, they had to quit. And the neighborhood watch disappeared. I've been to, I've been to Tyrone, I've been to Martinsburg, Roaring Spring, Altoona, different places in Altoona over again, and things seemed like they were working pretty good. When I would go to these meetings, I was impressed. Then all of a sudden, they didn't exist no more. So I guess that's what's here today, and the point that has to come out of this is how many people 
are willing to talk to other people in the community to reorganize this thing. And it doesn't take much as long as people want to do it. It doesn't, most people don't mind going, you know, to, uh, out to restaurant or a, a restaurant type bar and sit there and eat and talk and laugh for X number of nights a week. Uh, the economy probably doesn't allow you to go out and do anything you want all the time, but people usually find a way to go out at least once or twice a week, maybe, if they can afford it. But it doesn't cost any money. This you just go to, talk about your ideas, talk about maybe some of your problems, and talk about how to remedy them. And that's basically all it takes. So if, if people, besides the law enforcement, the folks that are here that aren't really law enforcement, although law enforcement should also be part of the deal, are willing to talk to other people in the community, see what you can do, try to organize groups, see if you can expand it, and once you're doing that, and once people, as I think someone either said here today, Michael said, once people know you got your eye on them, it makes a difference. You know, evil likes the darkness. It don't like the light. And that's what it gets down to, and that's what this program is all about. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Well, Rich stole my thunder. I, I really don't need to go on any further. He pretty much, you, you were in Harrisburg trying to keep a convicted murderer in jail, and you also knew my presentation tonight. You're pretty good. I talk about that guy. Uh, before I go further, I'd be remiss in not recognizing a true Blair County icon, and Donna Gordy. Uh, I, I'm involved in several organizations, and I know Donna's ten times more involved. And I haven't been to a meeting in any of these organizations that Donna hasn't been to. So uh, thank you very much, Donna, for your uh, contribution and being here tonight. I just want to spend a little bit of time going over about the Neighborhood Watch program and how to get uh, individual groups started. Uh, we have been used over the years to meeting together uh, once a month or uh, maybe uh, once every other month, uh, and that will continue. Uh, the whole concept, though, of a Neighborhood Watch program is getting it down to the grassroots level down to the neighborhoods and that's our goal our goal tonight is to uh, kick off a recruitment process for individuals in our community who are willing to step up and take a leadership role in revitalizing the neighborhood watch program it doesn't take a whole lot of time and I'll briefly go over some of the things to get get the program started in your neighborhood the whole concept though is very simple it's not vigilanteism it's not going out and patrolling your neighborhoods it's not intervening in criminal activity the concept is being aware of your surroundings neighbor looking out for neighbor and reporting suspicious activity. As Rich said, you know your neighborhoods better than the police do, better than the district attorney's office does, better than anyone else. You know if something it looks out of place in your neighborhood. You know if there's some thugs taking over a kid's park in your neighborhood. And those are the ideas that we want uh, for you to report to the proper authorities, the police in your jurisdiction. Now, as I said, we plan on getting together on a monthly or every six weeks as a group. But we would like individual neighborhoods or small groups of neighborhoods to get together to start forming your own neighborhood watch programs and this is how you get it first of all you determine whether or not there's a need or an interest now I think the first part is common sense we can't let this community go back to the way it was 
eight, nine years ago. We need to keep on top of the criminal activity and other quality of life issues in our community or we will find ourselves back where we were uh, several years ago. Remember, the most important thing is that you're looking out for each other. Neighbor looking out for neighbor. Now, there's some guidelines, and this comes from the national organization. These are loose guidelines. You don't have to follow these. You don't have to take verbatim notes. This is just something, if you are interested in getting a neighborhood watch program started in your neighborhood or your a few neighborhoods, I know there's some representatives here tonight. There, there's a group from Bellwood. There's a group from the... Uh, uh, towers downtown in the city of Altoona that's already got their groups up and running. Uh, the borough of Tyrone has really got a jump start. They started their program back in January and they have several meetings going uh, already each month. If you, what we're looking for here is some leaders, some people who are going to take on the role as a team leader or a coordinator. I don't really like the idea of uh, block captain, particularly with the, the problem that's occurred in Florida. We're looking for some, for some leadership. We're looking for some folks who are willing to make friends in their neighborhood. And sometimes that can be a little tough. So we need some folks that are willing to step up and go out and visit with neighbors and explain that you want to start your own neighborhood watch program in your neighborhood keeping in mind those three concepts being aware of your surroundings neighbor looking out for neighbor and reporting suspicious activity and our monthly meetings that we get together those will be the times when we have the guest speakers we'll have rich back uh, how many times you want to come <laughs> we'll have rich back we'll we'll have training on how to be aware of your surroundings how to reduce your risk of being a victim of personal crime or property crime. But the idea of each individual neighborhood is to get neighbors back to knowing each other. Uh, I, I know there's many of you out there that can recall uh, when I was younger, all the neighbors knew each other. Now, I grew up right up here on Gospel Hill. Not the sissy neighborhood that Randy came from. <laughs> <laughs> That's payback for earlier. But, but if I was out doing something in my neighborhood, my neighbors, if I was doing something wrong, my neighbors reported it to my mother before I got home. And I paid the price when I got home. We want to get that concept back up, where neighbors are looking for neighbors. We, we have had a, a real good project in getting some parks revitalized throughout the city of Altoona. But we don't want, as I said, the thugs coming in and destroying the hard work that has happened in these neighborhoods. So we're looking for leaders that go out and spark an interest in your particular neighborhood. Three weeks before you set up your, your meeting, you want to come up first with an agenda. An agenda that's identified to your neighborhood. What are the problems in your neighborhood? And I suggest that you keep to your agenda. What's important is keep your meetings on task and try to keep them to an hour. So three weeks in advance, get your agenda put together. Remember the one hour rule. Two weeks, you know, reconfirm with the people that are involved in your neighborhood on whether or not they're going to attend your meeting. You have to come up with a venue. A venue could be a church in your neighborhood. It could be your home. It could be a school. We've had a lot of luck with schools and churches. Uh, it could be a park in nice weather. It's a little chancy having it outdoors, but if you have a park, there's nothing better than getting a group of adults together at a park to show some of these kids that you are watching. You are gonna make sure that that park is not destroyed. One week in advance, you want to, again, firm up your, your attendance 
and try to get some helpers. You know, one person, it's pretty tough to get one person to coordinate everything. If you've got a good friend in your neighborhood, see if that person will help you. Refreshments are always nice. You know, there's nothing like getting people out for a couple cookies and a, you know, a, a little punch. If, if you can do that, and it doesn't cost a whole lot of money to do so. Again, th these are not hard, fast rules. Two days in advance, you want to make sure that you've got your, uh, either your refreshments together, any type of printed material. If you have your own guest speaker that's coming to your meeting, make sure that person is going to be there. And then you're ready to get to your first meeting. The most important thing about getting a meeting together, uh, or the, the very first meeting, is to get everybody involved. You know, they've taken time out of their schedule to come and check out what's going on in, in the neighborhood. And this is what's really important. When we talk about criminal activity, I'm sure I, I would, I would uh, guess there's not one person here tonight that has not had some type of crime committed in your neighborhood or close thereby. And you know when that happens, very often rumors start, and before you know it, a bicycle being stolen out of a backyard becomes a burglary and a rape. So what's important about these meetings is to get the facts. Talk to the folks uh, who are willing to be involved to find out exactly what took place in your neighborhood. Just speaking from experience, uh, in my neighborhood just last year, we had a series of house burglaries. And again, the rumors really started to run ra rampant. We had all kinds of descriptions of poten potential suspects. Not only the suspects, but the suspect's dog. You know, we had it from a, a poodle to a pit bull. You know, the, the person was walking around with this dog and the dog was acting as the watch out. But when neighbors started getting together and comparing what the facts were, there was reliable information that was able to be relayed to the Altoona Police Department, who did a fantastic job in identifying who was responsible for those burglaries. And here is, again, the whole concept of the Neighborhood Watch program. Getting together, identifying criminal activity that may be occurring in your neighborhood, or other, as I said, other quality of life issues that may be uh, affecting your neighborhood. What do I mean by that? It could be simple as a street light out. It could be uh, a problem with those older kids taking over a, a neighborhood uh, playground. It could be a problem with the sidewalk or a problem with a tree covering a stop sign. Those are issues that you need to get together and we'll provide the resources and the contact information as to who you report that to to take care of those issues. If it's a criminal problem, I've had a hundred times people ask me, when should I call 911? If you see something that's out of order, something that looks suspicious to you in your neighborhood, and you recognize that, hey, something's amiss here. You call 911 to have an officer dispatched to that area. I've also had folks tell me, well, I don't want to bother the police. Police, that's what the, we're here for. That's what the police are here for. The police would much rather respond to a report of an act of uh, potential crime and find out that it was really innocent and nothing to it then miss an opportunity to prevent a crime or apprehend a criminal who is responsible for the crime. So again, getting it down to the neighborhood level. It's fine for everybody to get together for meetings like this, but it's more important to get together in your own neighborhoods, uh, talk with each other, find out the people you can trust, Find out who can help you. Find out who you can rely on to report that activity to the police. 
What what happened here? <laughs> well, anyhow, I don't, something happened to the program. Did I time out? I have five minutes left. <laughs> Well, really, the only slides that were left here was, again, a, a thank you. Uh, what I'd like to do is if you are interested in uh, becoming a team leader, we have sign-up sheets. And don't be scared off by that. That doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to have a, a vest on your back that says, hey, I'm the person to call and report all your problems to. We're, we are looking for some, some people who will help us and we will be there to help you get these things organized in your neighborhood. And we will be here to, uh, to help provide some great activities. There's a, so much going on in our community right now to get folks involved. Uh, the parks programs, uh, the Booker T. Washington program is one of the parks. Uh, it, it's a crown jewel that sets in uh, our neighborhood right now uh, up on 19th Street and 13th Avenue. If you haven't had an opportunity, please go by and take a look at it. And the folks are taking care of it. They, there are some responsible adults who are making sure that the thugs who prey on these parks are not taking over that park. And we're moving on throughout the city to revitalize other parks. You can disregard. We don't really need that. I appreciate your help. I again want to thank also, uh, as, as we said earlier, uh, everybody who contributed, all the police departments, uh, all the, the uh, city, uh, township, and borough officials who have uh, voiced their support. Uh, we are going to be calling upon you to help this thing move forward. And where do we go from here? Where we go is please identify yourself as someone who is willing to help to uh, form these programs throughout our communities. Our goal here in the city of Altoona is to get four viable groups started uh, before the end of this year. I know we've got some groups already started with the towers. I know Fairview Hills is interested, but we like to get groups throughout the city uh, started before the end of the year and we're going to be visiting every community throughout Blair County. So if you can sign up, just let us know that you're willing to help, and we'll work together on getting this program kicked off and revitalized. Is there any questions? I saw a couple of hands. Judy. What's the size of the neighborhood? I mean, where do you, what do you look at when you say neighborhood? Yeah, that, that varies. That varies. Are very as it is. Right. Well, we're not talking, we're talking about individual neighbors getting together to form their own programs and we will come together period, periodically as a big group. But a neighborhood can be as small as a block. I don't recommend, that's pretty tough, but uh, several blocks. Uh, I know in the city of Altoona, uh, a lot of neighborhoods are identified with the schools. You know, uh, you've got the Wright School, you've got Baker School, th those areas. You can identify it by a church. It can be as large as you want. I would not recommend having 10 city blocks. Uh, you know, a few square blocks is probably more reasonable because when you get bigger than that, neighbors aren't really knowing what's going on. There could be a lot going on from one neighborhood to another. Uh, and it can be as small as you want. You know, I've been to meetings over the years where we've had groups anywhere from 50 to 100 people attending a meeting. And I've been to meetings, as Rich said, where we've had three people attend. It, it's more important to get people involved in it than we're talking about large geographical areas or large amounts of, of folks. The more involved, the better, obviously. Does that answer your question? Bernie. You had mentioned about uh, the W Park. The, the main 
finished that park up here while it was under construction, and that's a neighborhood that I'm affiliated with. I started in a park playground watch program, and, and we started that last year. And there's been three, I have three guys and myself, and we give that about 24 hours, seven days a week coverage. And thanks to the quick response of El Tuna Police Department, we caught a, a young man who was stealing pipe and tools from the construction site when they were putting in the exercise park. And we also put a stop to the graffiti that they were putting on. And, and these playground and community watch programs, they start in the area of your school and they work their way out. And if you live near a school where there's playgrounds and that, you know, and I, I you know, we're, we're focusing here where the generalize the crime, but the agenda is really to protect our children. And anywhere that you have kids coming to and fro, that's the areas in which you want to focus on, and the playground. And our biggest prevention will be presence. That they know that there's somebody watching, but don't know who you are. Exactly. That's a, a fine example of how a neighborhood watch program can be effective in your neighborhood to prevent the vandalism. And, and Rich said it perfectly. You know, criminals like darkness. Uh, they don't like, they're not going to target your house if you have a great big spotlight that comes on when, you walk, when they walk up to your house. This is the same concept. Operation Our Town, push out the pusher, the neighborhood watch program, they are the spotlights. And when these people come into a neighborhood and they see yards full of, of yard signs with push out the pusher numbers, they see neighborhood watch program signs in the neighborhoods, uh, they see the decals on the houses. That's like a spotlight to them. So they move on. And, and that is very true. It does happen. I've interviewed a number of uh, particularly juveniles over the years who said to me, I picked this house because the house down the street, I knew people were watching. So that's the concept. There are so, as I was saying earlier, there are so many community projects to also get involved to help get this thing going. There are several community gardens throughout the community, and we also, I'm going to, I'm going to plug our a big program for for May. We have our annual crime cleanup day. That's another program sponsored by Operation Our Town. It's going to be Saturday, May 12th. Uh, our start time is 8:30 in the morning. Anybody interested in coming out, we will first meet at the Highland Park. Then we will branch out. We're going to go to uh, eight or nine parks throughout the city of Altoona and clean up the parks, remove graffiti, uh, make sure that the, the parks are back up to the way they looked. We've, this is our third year, I believe, of doing this. And it has been a great program. Uh, uh, all kinds of folks have come out. To, to assist in cleaning up the parks. Uh, the photographs have been taken before and after, and we've had great results in, in the parks remaining uh, uh, graffiti clear, uh, at least for a while. Uh, but but that, then again, that's where we get back to neighbors looking out for neighbors. So if you can make it May the 12th, this will be a nice project to get involved uh, in helping to revitalize this, this program as well. Uh, if it's raining that day, it'll be May 19th. Uh, you'll be seeing these flyers, and we hope to have some coverage on it. Okay, that's been an hour. Are there any questions before we close? I'd like to just say one, one thing. Um, what, we, what we had told... You're not rich. You need a microphone. <laughs> what we had told our group that got together in 2006 and 2007, because this is a perfect example of it. Um, we told everybody in our group and anybody that affiliates with our group, Operation Our Town, what I want you to do is we want you to think outside the box. Don't think whether it's possible or not. We'll make the impossibles possible. We can do it. 
So if you think something's not right or it might be too tough, put the ideas out there. Let's talk about them. Let's see what we can do. You'd be amazed in what a community together can achieve. So let's all go home, think outside the box, become leaders, get our heads out of the sand is what we've told people before. Uh, you know, back a few years ago. And like, like Mitch had said, when we start staking our neighborhoods, that's what these signs, these push out the pusher signs were. We've come up with a couple new uh, slogans. This year it's uh, gonna be, our theme is uh, called Keeping It Going. Uh, Keeping Operation Our Town Going. Uh, that we're gonna be releasing here in May. That's, that's where we make the difference. And if we think outside the box, you'll be amazed at what we can achieve. Thank you. Thank you. Before you leave, uh, a couple of things. Please don't forget to fill out a form if you are willing to do so. Uh, we're not going to hold you to any commitment, but please pass the word. Get folks involved. I see a lot of folks that were involved with us for years and years. Please get the word out there so we can get things rolling again. And please come up and help yourself to the handouts and the push out the pusher yard signs. We pretty much met our goal for tonight. I thank you so much. I thank all the police departments for being here. We appreciate your support. <laughs>